Hey, this is Stephen Whitesides here with Greenbrier Music on how to set up your double bass drum pedal. I'm using a Drumcraft Series 8 double bass drum pedal since I just have one set up and I just played a video with this uh, Series 8 North American Maple Drumcraft drum set. So most pedals, including this one, have some standard parts. So doing the setup for this pedal or a Gibraltar, a Tama, DW, a Pearl Demon Drive, they're all really similar. Uh, I'm going to go from bottom to top, kind of working backwards, because I already had this pedal set up, so we're kind of going to break it down as we go. First, let's take a look at the bass drum pedal beaters. You have a soft side and a hard side. On a pearl pedal, you can have up to four sides. So if we loosen the second screw down here, you can actually turn your pedal around or pull it out, and you can adjust how deep in does your pedal go. You can use this memory lock to determine how uh, deep in you want your pedal beater to go and fix it there. You can also, though, use it as a weight. I'm not sure if it was its intended purpose, but you can move this up higher on the shaft of your pedal beater, and the higher it is, the more weight there is up here, so the more you're going to feel a snap at the end of the pedal stroke as it gets closer to the head. Uh, that might help if you're looking for a more aggressive pedal sound and you're finding you're accidentally ghost noting or hitting too light when you try to go fast. Uh, just experiment with moving this around to get a different feel. And experiment with how high up your pedal beater is. Uh, the higher up it is, the farther your pedal beater has to travel back and forth. That means more punch, more volume, more impact. But since it has to travel farther, that might not be the best thing for speed. Uh, so that said, moving backwards, go ahead and take this off. You've also got your right side one. Same story. And if you wanted to rotate it around and use the hard plastic side, just spin it like that and then tighten it back up using a drum key. We're going to go ahead and pull this one off. All right, next thing to look at is going to be the spacer bar here. You need to look at how far apart do you want your feet to comfortably work with the bass pedal and the hi-hat stand that you have. And you need to leave your pedals far enough apart so your snare stand can fit in the middle. You've also got to look at your spring tension here. The spring tension on your left pedal often needs to be a little bit tighter and just a tiny bit so that when you push on each pedal, they should feel about the same. If one's really stiff, you've got to lay into it. In your right pedal, you push it and it springs back and forth all day. Your tension doesn't really match. You're going to be working harder with one foot than the other. What that's going to mean is one foot will be slower than the other. It'll be very difficult to pull off clean footwork. I have this pedal set up really tightly, and that's what the Series 8 double bass drum pedal is best for. If you like a tight pedal, if you like to really lay into your double bass drum pedal, um, and typically if you use a higher throne height, I feel like you're going to because you're putting more body weight bearing down on it, this might be the pedal set up for you. But if you wanted to loosen that, on this pedal, you've got to loosen a memory lock here, just a little drum key screw, and you can see it's this one right here. You're going to push down, and then you can spin this part here up and down. It uh, feels like spinning it to the right is going to loosen your spring tension. Spinning it to the left, uh, spinning it counterclockwise uh, from a bird's eye view is going to tighten. This serves as another memory lock. So once you have the right tightness for you, spin this all the way down. And that's going to keep things from loosening up while you're playing and from your spring tension basically going all over the place or from it uh, unscrewing to the point where this nut falls off the bottom in the middle of you playing if you're running it on the loose side. You've also got to set up your pedal beater angle. So when you pull these out of the box, they're not attached to the pedal. You've got to stick them in there yourself and tighten them up. You've also got to unloosen this particular screw here. Uh, it's this one. And that's going to allow you to adjust the angle that your pedal beater is at when the pedal's at rest. We're doing the left pedal here, so if I want my pedal to sit right about here when I haven't touched it yet, that's where I'll place it, then I'll tighten this, and voila, that's where your pedal sits. Now other drummers might want to loosen this, especially if you want to go fast. Kind of a matter of opinion, but you might want it sitting closer to your bass drum head. That's going to take a lot of impact out. You're going to be playing rather whisper quiet if you set it straight up and down like that. But that's as far as you've got to go to get to your head. So you can barely touch your pedal and you're going to get a response. For guys using triggers or guys who are exclusively doing double bass all day, 
64th notes nonstop, this might be a good solution. More often than not, though, I see every famous drummer, every pro I've ever seen back here. And the reason why is no one ever takes their foot all the way off the pedal. You have your toe depressing the pedal about to here. And then when you're actually going to strike, you're pushing it in more, and it's rebounding. But I don't see really good drummers, when I look close up at their foot cams, letting their pedal swing wildly like this. If you did, it'd probably be hitting you in the shins. Ouch. So that's a breakdown of just about everything you need to know about your pedal. Just keep in mind, this pedal has Velcro to stabilize it. It's also got these little screws right here. If you tighten them, spikes are going to pop out of the bottom here. That's great if you've got a carpeted surface you can do that on. Hardwood floor like this, you ought to keep those spikes retracted. There you have it. So set this up so it'll be comfortable for you, it'll treat you well, and you'll know the ins and the outs of it. Break it all the way down, set it all the way back up, you'll know how a bass pedal really works, and you'll be able to adjust it to fit you. If you just buy a Pearl Demon Drive, which I think is a nicer pedal, it's going to come out of the box ready to play and set up for someone, but maybe not for you. And you might tweak it once, but you may never really fully understand what it's capable of. So whether you buy that or buy this, it's a good thing that this comes in pieces. You know, the, the pedal beaters are not attached to it. Uh, this is separated. And you got to put it together. You know, again, really understand it and take time, and you'll really improve the quality of your double bass drum pedal work. Call 540-372-DRUM to order this or anything else you'd like from Greenbrier Music.